All right, so let's get started. We're going to start. Anyone here a anyone here a pastor? Retired. Re retired pastor. Would would you give us the honor of opening us up in in prayer? Sure. Father, we thank you so much for your word, where we receive so much wisdom, Lord, from your word alone. But also, we need you, Holy Spirit, to guide us and open up our hearts and minds to your word, that we might truly become wise. And thank you, Father, for Jesus, in whom all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge dwell. So, Jesus, we ask you also to give us your wisdom and to anoint our teacher today as he speaks to us, that we might truly gain more wisdom, and not only gain it in understanding, but apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Come on in. If there's some sheets back there, you grab that. Anyone else need a sheet? Another sheet? Yeah, that'd be good to get a little airflow through here. All right. Yeah, this is this is great having all these men. We're kind of crammed, but a lot of times you don't have this many men around. So, oh, you got the little kids' chair too. <laughs> all right. So we're gonna get started. My name is Jim Daughtry. I was born and raised here in the Chicago area. And I accepted the Lord in my senior year of high school. Uh, after high school, I didn't want to go to college, so I went to a trade school for a year and uh, studied electronics. And I like to tell people when I graduated, I got out and I was an electronic technician. I was working on state-of-the-art technology, fax machines. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you young guys may not even have seen a fax machine. Well, back then, they were more complicated. I actually installed them, and I repaired them, and I drove around the Chicago area. And uh, during that time, I would uh, listen to the radio. I would listen to Moody Radio. And uh, as I listened to Moody Radio, I, I really got a burden for missions. So I ended up quitting my job and going to Moody Bible Institute. I was a missions major. I graduated. I spent some time in Africa. Uh, but most of my time was spent in Mexico. I was in a small town, uh, Mexico City. <laughs> 25 million people in that area. I also yeah. spent time in Puebla, Mexico. Um, that's where they actually made the Volkswagen bug. Uh, if you ever went to Mexico years ago, there was just tons of bugs. They made all those in, in Puebla. Well, there was a lot of family problems back home, so uh, I ended up having to come back from the mission field and like many of you men, I, I pretty much have spent the rest of my life working and then just doing ministry on the side. Um, I went into sales. My first job was um, selling electronic equipment because I had that background. Uh, after that, I worked for an adhesive company. Now, that was sticky business. <laughs> <laughs> then for the last 15 years or so, I was selling steel. And I like to say that because that sounds manly, right? I sold yeah. steel, okay? Yeah. All right, well, during that time, um, I taught men's Bible studies for many, many years. And I ended up putting the Bible studies together. And um, my book was published when I became a man. I worked really hard at getting this book down to a really low l reading level. It's actually eighth grade reading level because men don't like to read. So it's easy, and I made it really short and concise, and it's one of those old Bible study guides where you actually have to open up your Bible and look up Bible verses. <laughs> so I, I don't do this for a living to make money, so I think it's ten ninety five on Amazon, conference special, $2. Wow. If you have a men's ministry, buy a bunch of them and go through the Bible study. Um, another book I wrote is on Proverbs 31. You might say, wait a minute, that, that's for women, right? Proverbs 31. Mm -hmm. But uh, Proverbs 31, men need to read and study this book too and understand the proverb. Um, the book is uh, $12.95 on Amazon. 
uh, conference special three dollars. Again, it's, it's so you guys can have resources. Mm -hmm. Now this book um, it, it's great for men, but it's for women too, and the women really like it because they like Proverbs thirty one. So uh, thirteen dollars on Amazon, you could buy it for three bucks and give it to your wife, your yeah. sister, your mother, and they can say, "Hey, you spent thirteen dollars. Don't tell me you spent three bucks on it." So. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be looking at, um, if you guys have pens or anything, or pencils, and if you don't, you could borrow one from someone. If not, it's okay. Uh, this is actually a, a one question from my book, When I Became a Man, and I just kind of expanded it, and we're going to be looking at it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the first couple of them and kind of show you guys um, how this works. And then later, I'd, I'd like to have you guys kind of go through them and, and uh, get back your input and, and feedback. So the first one is Proverbs 3.35. This is from the King James Version. Some of you may have other perversions, or ah. versions, I mean. Um, but this is King James. The wise shall inherit glory but shame shall be the promotion of fools. The wise shall inherit glory. Now that word inherit, uh, sometimes we get the wrong idea of the word inherit. Uh, for example, you may have inherited baldness, you know. I'm kind of getting there on top too. You didn't deserve it, you didn't do anything for it, but you just inherited it. Or maybe there's some rich relative that you never even met and you inherited money from that relative. You didn't do anything to deserve it, you just inherited. Well, that's not the meaning of the word here. Uh, the, the meaning of this word in, in the Hebrew is, is to get, to have, to possess. This is something that you get, that you have, because uh, you inherit glory because uh, you deserve it, because you've made wise decisions throughout your life. So the wise, because of their wise decisions, inherit glory or get glory. So in the spaces there, what I like the men to do is just to write a little note for yourself to help you remember the verse. So for the wise man, I put the wise man gets glory. Okay. The second one, second part of that verse, for the fool, it says, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. Shame shall be the promotion of fools. So really simply, for that one I put, fools get shame. And that just helps me to remember the verse better. And I don't have to tell you a lot about scandals um, with celebrities, sports figures, politician, businessmen, and even sadly to say ministers, pastors, all these scandals and all the shame because of unwise decisions that they've made in their lives. So that's part of the reason you men are here, all of us. We need to, to be wise men and continue learning and become wiser. Um, the next one, Proverbs 10.1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is the heaviness of his mother. So it says, a wise son maketh a father glad. Uh, and for that one, I simply put for the, for the wise man, he, he makes his father glad. But I just want to think about that a little bit more. Um, why does it say that he makes his father glad? Most likely his mother's glad too, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't say that. Uh, it says it makes his father glad. And I think that's because as men, we relate to certain emotions more than others. You know, we cheer for our football team. We like to be excited about things like that. But now if it's our son and he's going the wrong way and making unwise decisions and doing foolish things, we don't want to deal with it. I don't even want to think about that. We can relate to the gladness, but the other stuff we we tend to suppress certain things. No, I don't, I don't want to be sad. I don't want to cry. I don't want to think about all these problems. Usually what it is, it's the mother that deals with all those emotions. 
So it says, a wise son maketh the father glad, but a foolish son is the heaviness, heaviness of his mother. Um, our words and actions affect other people. Okay, We all were sons. Many of you have sons. And so the words and actions that we do not only affect us, but they affect other people. So this son, a wise son is making his father glad, and a foolish son is making his mother sad. Makes his father sad too, but we, we as men kind of suppress that, right? All right, let's look at the next one. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the fool is near destruction. So I want to ask some of you guys, just thinking about that verse, uh, what do you understand with that? And uh, we may have some different answers here. Actually, when I was at Bible college, uh, there's about 500 students in the incoming class. They gave us statistics. They said there were 42 different denominations represented by those 500 students coming in. So you don't think there was some disagreement there on doctrine, 42 different denominations there. So sometimes uh, we may have a little difference of opinion. But I'd like to hear some of you guys. Um, wise men lay up knowledge, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. Any thoughts on that? What would you put for the wise man and what would you put for the fool? The Okay, all right, thank you. Anyone else? Yeah, my translation says it is better to remain silent and thought a fool than to mm -hmm. speak and remove all doubts. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's another verse, I believe, right? That, that, is, a, that is a great verse, that's yeah. Great verse. All right. I'm thinking input output. The one who's taking or laying up knowledge is gaining input, whereas the one who's speaking it out is it's output. Right, and, and the input... Um, that's the way I kind of think of it for the wise man. It's a the wise, electronics way. Of yeah, thinking. exactly. I get the electronics background, right? The, the, the data, the computer coming in. And what I put up for that one, um, for the wise man, I put is a warehouse of knowledge. The wise man lays up knowledge. The wise man just keeps learning. He's going to church. He's coming to conferences like this, and he's learning, and he's storing up this knowledge, just like a computer database, okay? Um, the foolish, um, but the mouth of the foolish is near destruction. So what I put for that, for the foolish man, uh, the foolish man speaks words that lead to disaster. Uh, the fool speaks words that sometimes can be enticing, okay? I remember I was... Uh, fixing fax machines. And I used to go to the Chicago um, police stations. They had a little lock up there, a little jail with a couple cells. And I was fixing a fax machine. They brought in a young man, put him in the, he was just like a boy to me. They put him in one of the jail cells and then they left. I was just there alone. And I'm working on this fax machine. And this boy called out to me and he said, he said, you know, he didn't know. I, I'm, I'm the fax repairman, but he's like, I got to talk to someone. He said, I am so scared. He said, I've never been in trouble before. And he looked like a, a good, clean-cut kid. And he looked like he was 15 to me or something. He said, I'm scared. I've never been in trouble before. He said, my friends said, let's, let's go do this, okay? And his friends, speaking foolishness that he believed, he went along with them, and he's in jail. So I was a believer at the time, and um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be speaking to the prisoners, you know, but I spent some time to talk with this young man. He was really just like a boy and, and try to encourage him to, to stay on the right track. I don't know what eventually happened to him, but I just remember the anguish. It says, I've never been in trouble before, and now he's behind bars. Um, it's not just young people. 
you can be an older man and be foolish. And uh, a lot of times, I think with older men, where I see part of the problems, and maybe in my own life too, is with finances. And you always hear about these men saying, I heard about this great opportunity, and I'm going to mortgage the house and invest in this, and I'm going to double my money. How many have heard stories like that? And so a lot of times older men, you know, hopefully we're wiser. We've lived longer. We've been around more. Uh, the church I go to, uh, there's a new pastor, praise God. He's, he's a young man, and I think he's a wise man, but I'm just trying to be his friend and his older man, just share some life experience with him. And so that's what we need, I think, to do as, as older men is uh, share some of that wisdom. Do you have a comment? No, I think something that I think um, <clears throat> should be shared too, yeah, is you get a lot of your knowledge from the Bible. Yeah. And whereas the foolish person doesn't, so they'll utter words that are don't really have a lot of substance, whereas, you know, you're getting knowledge from the Bible that has that substance, you can share it. Amen. You can be young and have that knowledge already, and not necessarily be old, you know, and have right. the knowledge of the Bible. Amen. Uh, yeah, the fool yeah. definitely, I don't think, is in church and learning the Bible and reading the Word of God, right? I think the fool never learns, you know. He keeps yeah. making the same mistakes over and over. He yeah. Never mm -hmm. Yeah. I sure. Yeah, um, what I see here is that the wise man is a doer, <coughs> laying out. He's actually doing something, okay? Where the foolish man just talks. Yeah. And there's a lot of uh, so-called Christians, and sometimes we fall into the same trap. We're actually we t we know the word, we talk about the word, but we don't put it, we don't activate it in our own lives. And so it's like, oh, I know what, exactly what you need to hear, but they don't do the word themselves. Right. And so that's where the foolish man basically. Is just talk where the wise man he actually lays a hold of the word and he lays it up. So Amen. A doer and then you're just a, a talker. Amen. Good comments. Good comments. And the, the the reason I really like to compare the wise man and the fool is because uh, we need to all think about. I, I think you men have made good decisions. You came to the conference. That's that's wise, and we want to become wiser. But. Um, we can still make foolish decisions. And so I like to compare the wise man and the fool and say, you know, how am I acting, all right? Which, which man am I acting like? I want to act like the wise man. And there may, be, there may be one or two or a couple of these where you might say, hey, I need, to, I need to act more like the wise man in this area. So I just challenge you, memorize that verse if you're having a struggle in that area. Uh, to be a wise man. All right, let's go to the next one, um, Proverbs twelve fifteen. The way of the fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. So it kind of flips it. He was talking about the, the, the wise man first. It talks about the fool first. It says, the way of the fool is right in his own eyes. So just a quick little couple words or statement can you think of, kind of putting that in your own words to try to remember what that is? Self-indulging ego. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Self-indulging and ego, all right. Anyone else? His ways always seem better. What'd you say? To the fool, his ways always seem better. Right, good, good. All right, good. Anyone else? All right, so I put, for the fool, this is what I wrote, um, he thinks he's right and doesn't listen to anyone. He thinks he's right and doesn't listen to anyone. Uh, he has all the answers. He doesn't need to listen to anyone because he has all the answers, right? Do you guys know anyone like that? Yeah. Unteachable. And, you know, we want to make sure that we're teachable and that we're not always thinking that we have all the answers that sometimes we be quiet and we be humble and we listen and say, okay, I, I need to learn. No matter how old you are, um, you're constantly, constantly going to be learning and, and trying to become wiser. So for the wise man, it says, but he that hearkeneth, hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. So for that, I just simply put, for the wise man, he listens to counsel. He listens to counsel. 
No, it doesn't depend on the council. I mean, there's good council and bad council. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, it doesn't say specifically here that he listens to wise counsel, but I think we could kind of assume he's listening to wise counsel, and the fool is probably listening to yeah. bad counsel. Yeah. <coughs> right back here, yeah. Um, I was just going to say that the word hearkeneth is actually from the root shema, which is to listen intently, to hear, to pay attention to. All right. Listen up. Great, great, good comment. Yes? You know, when, you, when a person thinks they're right in their own eyes, that's the sin of pride. Mm -hmm. And then for a person who's willing to listen to others, that they know they can gain something positive from that, that's somebody who is humble and does not have the pride that keeps them from learning. Amen. Amen. It, and these are verses... Um, for us, too. You know, we need to think about that, not just to think about, oh, yeah, I know a guy like that. Yeah, we know a lot of guys like that. Hopefully, we're not that guy, too, right? All right, let's look at the next one. Um, just one thing I wanted to, on, on that last one I wanted to mention, uh, you can jot this down. We're not going to turn there. Is Proverbs uh, 1 5 says, A wise man will hear and increase in learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. So a, a wise man will continue learning. Okay, there's never going to be a point where you know it all. All right, next one. Proverbs 13, 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So for the wise man... Could write down something there, a couple words. Anyone think of anything? Yeah. The company that he keeps. The company that he keeps, yeah. Right? Anyone else? What did you say? He said iron sharpens iron. Yeah, but the first guy who spoke today said you're the accumulation of five people you hang around the most. Yeah. That's sort of core. You know, maybe it's five people you're hanging around with right right yeah exactly um i was a missionary in mexico i mentioned and anyone here speak spanish do you speak spanish okay so uh, you speak spanish too so uh, there's a saying in mexico that i really really i heard and i really like it i'll let either you two gentlemen translate it for me it says dime con quien andas y te digo quien eres dime con quien andas y te digo quien eres who you hang out with is who you are, basically. Who you, it, it, basically, tell me who you hang out with, and I'll tell you who you are, okay? There's a similar kind of proverb or whatever in English. In Spanish, this is a saying or proverb that they have. What do we say in English? Something similar to that. Show me your friends, and I'll show you you. Yeah, yeah, there's something like that. There's another one Bad I think of. No. What did you say? Bad company. Yeah, well, that's the Bible, but yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So another one is uh, birds of a feather flock together, right? So, you know, if there's someone that's, that's hanging out with, with alcoholics or drug addicts or, or whatever it may be, pretty good chance that they either are or are going to be involved in, in that lifestyle, okay? Now, sometimes I know we need to go and to try to reach out to people like that, but we really have to be careful that we're not spending our time and getting our fellowship and, and everything with, with these people. Mm -hmm. Now, some people might say, you know, got to stay away from people like that. It, it depends, too, especially if you've had a problem with alcoholism or, or whatever, you have to be more careful. But God works in mysterious ways. I remember there was a friend of mine, and he had problems with drug and alcohol. Um, but he came to know the Lord. He struggled throughout his life still with that, but... He really had a burden for his friends. So uh, he was trying to find this one guy, and he could never find him. And finally someone said, ah, he's down at the bar. So my friend, I don't know if I'd recommend this. So he went down to the bar, and he said, I'm going to go in because I want to talk to this guy. Well, back in, this is years ago, there's like a $2 cover charge. So he pays the $2 to get into the bar. 
he's talking to his friends. He's, hey, we got to get together and meet. I want to talk to you. What God has done in my life and stuff like that. Again, I don't know if this is right or not, but amazingly, uh, they he paid the two dollar cover charge. They were raffling off a bike. He won the bicycle. So I don't know if God blessed him for that or what. But I don't really encourage that. But God works in mysterious ways, right? All right. So, um, yeah, sure. Show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Um, here, uh, I put, you know, the wise man hangs out with wise men and becomes wiser. That's my note for that. What I wanted to put was um, the fool hangs out with fools and becomes more foolish. That. That's probably a good sentence, that's but that's not what it says. And in Bible college, I said, be sure you're true to the text, that you're not putting things into the Bible, but you're taking out what it says. So even though it might be true, a, a, a fool hangs out with fools and becomes more foolish. You know, I could have wrote that down, but I thought, no. What does it say? But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. So uh, what I put for that one, a fool hangs out with fools and suffers the consequences. Yeah. I think that's more true to the text, okay? So, one thing I wanted to, to mention here, yeah? I think it would be important for you to give us a definition between uh, what's the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Because we're talking about why the two are not, as you know, the same. And so, if, I, I can know the answer, but I just wanted to have that to know, you know yeah, good. Explain that to us. So this way, when we talk about why, we know what we're talking about. Good. A excellent point. Um, and actually, uh, I wanted to give you an example. And um, what we're talking about here is, is wisdom. Uh, we're not talking about intelligence. Um, there's men that have degrees. They have master's degrees. They have doctorates. Uh, and they're in jail, okay? There's... there's, there's very intelligent men that are in jail. There's very intelligent men that have ruined their lives. Okay, so we're not talking about intelligence. Um, there is a man from my old church. This keeps going down. I'm, I'm pretty soon. I'm be going lower. Uh, there's a man from my old church. His name was Billy, and Billy, I'm not sure, but he had some type of learning disability. Okay. I don't know what his IQ was. It was probably very low. But Billy was in church every Sunday. Billy was at the Wednesday night prayer meeting. Billy was at the men's Bible study. And some people might say, ah, oh, well, you know, he had some learning disabilities. Uh, you know, Christianity's a crutch. He needed the church. No. There's guys that weren't any smarter than him hanging out in the corner and getting in trouble. Billy was in church because he wanted to be in church. Billy wanted to be with other godly men and with wise men. Billy was not very smart, but Billy was a wise man. So we're not talking about being intelligent. You know, you might be saying, well, you know, I'm not that smart, you know, I don't have a degree, and I didn't finish high school or whatever. You could still be a wise man, even though you're not really intelligent. And I'm not, I encourage anyone, if young people here, finish high school, go to college, that's all great stuff. And it's good to gain intelligence and knowledge, but more important is to gain wisdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like A.W. Tozer. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> okay. The knowledge you gain from the Lord. Yeah. What he did with that knowledge. He went on to get his education, but what he did with that knowledge that God gave him. Right. All right. Good. Yeah. So to me, knowledge is uh, what you you acquire as you read the Bible. But wisdom is the application of that knowledge. Okay. That's what makes Amen. us a wise man. Making the wise choices. Okay, we use the, the Word of God as our base, which is knowledge, but then the Spirit of God gives us wisdom how to apply that to our situation. And 
that's what wisdom is all about. Is yeah. to, to, you know, to be wise is to be able to make the right choices based on the knowledge that you have. Right. Uh, right. When the fool does, he looks at that knowledge and makes the wrong decision. And then the wise man takes that same knowledge and makes a wise decision and uses that wise decision to get where he becomes wise himself. And a wise man, if I can add to that, a wise man gains wisdom by watching fools. Yeah, that's what we're doing here. We're seeing what the fools do, and we're like, we don't want to, we don't want to be like that, right? Yeah. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Discernment. Okay. I got a little bit of a hearing problem. I'm in denial and saying I, I, I don't have one. I think I might need a hearing aid. Yeah. <laughs> I bought one of those cheap hearing aids that amplifies everything, and so someone sneezes, slams the door, it's like, well, so, so I don't use it. But uh, I could hear you, men, but um, yeah, if you could speak up a little, uh, that would be helpful. One last thing I just want to say before we move on, we were talking about the last part of the verse where, um, uh, well, actually the whole verse, um, there's a program some of you might be sim um, familiar with, it's called uh, Awana, okay? Now, I think they've changed the program a lot. I haven't worked with it too much. I've worked mostly with high school and young adults and men's ministry. But um, it used to be where you memorized all these verses in the Bible, okay? And that's great. Praise God. I've heard testimonies of, of adults saying, I remember those verses that I, I learned as a child. And, and sometimes they'd even say, I didn't know what it meant when I, I learned it, but now I, I understand it. So I think it's important to memorize the Bible, but part of the reason we're doing this exercise here and I'm having you put in your own words what the verse means because I want you to process it and I want you to understand what the verse means. But don't memorize your notes. <laughs> memorize the Word of God, that's what we want to do. But just d putting your notes down is just helping you kind of process it and think and understand the verse. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, a wise man feareth and departeth from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. A wise man feareth and departs from evil, but the fool rageth and is confident. Uh, there's a little bit of controversy on this verse. I'll explain it to you, but anyone have uh, any thoughts on this? Their, your notes, what you might put down for that for the wise man? He fears God, maybe? Oh, Go on. I'm sorry? Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. All right. What did you say, Pastor? Well, wise man fears God. That's the, that's the, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, right? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you what the controversy is, and I'm going to, I'm going to tell you how, how I kind of interpret and understand this verse, and you don't have to agree. But um, the, the debate here is um, what the wise man is fearing. It says, a wise man feareth and departeth from evil. I put, the wise man fears evil and gets away from it. Um, I want to tell you a story about a friend of mine that was an alcoholic. And he came to know the Lord. And after he came to know the Lord, he said he used to stop off at the bar all the time going home from work. And when he came to know the Lord, he was scared to pass by that bar because he knew the addiction. He knew how that had devastation on his life. So... He feared that lifestyle. He feared falling back into sin. So he took the long way home and went around just so that he didn't have to go past that bar and be tempted. I tend to think that the verse here is saying, the wise man feareth and departs from evil. I believe that it doesn't mention the Lord in here. It says, he feareth and departs from evil. So I'm thinking he's fearing the evil. He's fearing the destruction and the bondage of that sin. And he's staying away from it. Now, we do need to fear the Lord. And there's a verse very, very similar to that. If you want to jot this down, it's Proverbs 3, 7. It says, be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord 
There is telling you, fear the Lord and depart from evil. So yes, we should fear the Lord and depart from evil. But going back to Bible college, interpreting things, we don't want to put things into the Bible. We want to take out what's there. And so my, my understanding is it doesn't say the Lord. It's focusing on him departing from evil. So I believe his fear is getting caught up in the bondage of sin. We, we may disagree on that. Any, any thoughts? Yeah. And that in itself is part of wisdom, is knowing that there are consequences and we don't want to suffer those consequences and therefore we stay away from those. Right. Yeah, that's, that's my understanding of it. Um, the second part of the verse, but the fool rageth and is confident. The fool rages and is confident. For that one I put the fool is irrational. By rages, uh, he's irrational. Um, and trusts himself. He's confident. I, I think the idea there is kind of the fool. He's irrational and, and he, he's confident, I meaning he trusts himself like, you know what? I could go to that bar, no problem. I could do this, no problem. We've talked a lot about pornography. You know what? I could look at this, no problem. I'm not going to have an addiction. I'm not going to. The fool is confident. He thinks, no, I could handle that. I think the wise man says, no, I fear that. I stay away from that, okay? I don't know if it was uh, Elvis's song or not, but it used to sing, a fool's rush in where angels fear to tread. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's the first time I heard Elvis at, at a men's conference. But, yeah. There's a lot of, he sang gospel before rock and roll. So. Yeah. yeah. All right, so, um, yeah. Hmm. Okay, they just they just yelling and screaming. They call us Christians bigots, and you know we, we hate people because we try to speak the truth. And so all they have is just hate, and they rage, and they're confident in their own beliefs, and they believe whatever they want to do. So to me, this is an indication of the generation that we're living in right now. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. All right. Next one. Um, <clears throat> Proverbs fifteen two. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pour out foolishness. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools pour out foolishness. Anyone on that? He said that, um, that wisdom is um, discernment, and I think that's, that's the case because in the, um, Proverbs 10, 14, wise men lay up knowledge. Wise, wise, I think, is discernment, being able to make this knowing immediately what's right or wrong. And then knowledge is the accumulation of that. Like, knowledge is what you build up. And, you know, lay, lays, lays up knowledge, like you put it away to use it later. And I think that here, it reflects that the tongue of the wise use knowledge aright. So somebody who has natural discernment is using what they already have experienced or know to speak on something that they can share and help somebody. Good. Yeah, what I put for this one, just simply, I put uh, the wise man speaks in a, in a wise manner. Um, he uses knowledge aright. He uses knowledge in the right way. Um, kind of goes back to what we were saying a little bit. You could, you could have all this knowledge stored up, and maybe the fool has a lot of knowledge stored up, or even a wise man. You know, maybe... Um, you, you know, you've studied a lot, you know the Word of God, someone comes to you and you just want to pour out all this information on them and wisdom, and you know what? Sometimes we just need to keep our mouth shut and just listen to this brother and let them talk. And that's what the, I think what the wise man does. Uh, the wise man uses knowledge aright. He uses it in the right way. He says things in a way that the person is going to understand it. He says it at the right time. So it's not just having all this wisdom and all this knowledge, but it's using it right. And there's times I know I've been like the fool where someone's sharing something with me, and I'm like, oh, you know, you know what you need to do? And I'm giving them all these answers, 
when you know what? I should have just been quiet, listened to what this brother was saying, and then in the right moment, talk to them. And if you're married with your wives too, okay, you need to listen to the whole long story instead of saying, hey, you know what, honey, you just need to do this, this, and this. This is what I read this book. This is what it says, no? In that case, I learned a trick. It's uh, the, the invisible glass of water. Okay. Where when someone's telling you something and you want to say something, you pretend that you're drinking a glass of water. <laughs> okay. All right. It, 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 it works for me. It does work for me. Well, what do you do? If you choke? <laughs> no, no. She, she starts talking and stops, and you're waiting and waiting for her to get going again. Then she starts going, I didn't, I didn't finish. Uh, sometimes you got to wait till the next day, maybe, you know? So. All right, so let me do the second part of it. Um, yeah. yeah. I would say to go along with that, uh, with the bride thing, is that sometimes it, uh, it's helpful to affirm the thought process that's being transmitted to you because then that other party realizes that you're interested in them and that you're actually listening instead right. of just getting, talking to the wall. Right, right. And I've also learned that um, I don't uh, try to problem solve for my bride, but I might ask her how she felt if she said this or she said that or you feel like they want to they want to be their feelings want to be affirmed right they right want, they want to be heard they don't necessarily need a, a exactly. an answer yeah exactly yeah. this gentleman here had a i think people need to think talk to god so that he can help you make the right decisions yeah amen so for the fool i put just simply the wise man speaks in a wise manner the Fool speaks foolishly. And uh, this just came to mind. I grew up in Chicago, and I'm about the rest of you guys, but um, the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. Poureth out foolishness. What came to my mind when I read that, growing up in Chicago, uh, on a hot summer day, I don't see this much anymore, we would open up the fire hydrants. I never did it. But I participated when they opened it up and they put their hands and they kind of couldn't even hold it back. And sometimes they get a board and they get that water to spray. That was fun. I know it's not right because it drops the water pressure and everything. But that water just gushed out of that fire hydrant. And that's what I think here. But the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. I don't know if you've ever been with the guy that was a fool that you worked with him. And man, it's just all day long. He's just pouring out foolishness. And I just want to get away from this guy mm -hmm. because all it is is foolishness is that he's saying, okay? Someone back there have a comment? I call it diarrhea. From <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Yes? I say the, the wise man thinks before he opens his mouth and the uh, foolish man doesn't. Good. Good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I knew a guy that no matter what topic you talked about, he was an expert on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're going to hurry up just a little bit because uh, we got about, what, 15 minutes left? Um, so the next one here, uh, Proverbs 29 11, a fool uttereth all of his mind, but a wise man keepeth it in till afterwards. A fool uttereth all of his mind, but a wise man keepeth in until afterwards. Just a quick couple words, any of you guys, what what you think on that? He doesn't think before he speaks. The fool doesn't think before he speaks? Doesn't think before he speaks. Okay, the fool doesn't think before he speaks. The wise man Keeps his emotions in check pretty much close to what I put down. I put he, the, or the wise man maintains his composure, okay? Uh, he, he keeps his emotions in check. Um, normally, uh, keeping, your, uh, keeping in your anger sometimes later results in an explosion. So, so we got to have to kind of be careful. We, we, we keep our anger in, but eventually we're going to have to um, maybe deal with with the situation. And my wife and I kind of have an agreement 
when we first got married, I, I, we were both raised in homes where um, our, our mother, more than anything, uh, maybe our father, they would give each other the silent treatment, okay? <laughs> and my wife and I said that was very hurtful, even to the children. Uh, the mother or father gave the silent treatment. And we said, that, that's a hurtful thing. We're not going to do that in our marriage. But we're going to respect the fact that maybe you need a day or two just to have some time to kind of calm yourself, get yourself together, get your composure, and then we'll talk about, about the problem, the situation, okay? And that's what we do in our marriage. And I understand, okay, my wife hasn't talked to me for a day or two. She's processing, she's calming herself. We're going to have a talk, and it's going to be uh, talking about things in the heat of the moment. Um, maybe sometimes it's necessary, but, but usually it, it, it's not a real good thing to do. So a, a fool uttereth all of his mind, and, and that word mind there um, has the idea, it, it's, it's mind in, in, in the Hebrew, but it, it has the idea kind of, of anger too. So a fool uttereth all of his mind kind of with the idea when he's angry. And what I think of is, you know, he lets it all out, okay? That's what I put. The fool lets out all of his anger. Both barrels, bam, man, you're getting all of it, all right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we need not to do. No self-control. No self-control. We need to say, okay, you might have to tell you. It could not be your wife. It could be your brother, your sister, your mother. I need some time. We'll talk later, okay? That's what the wise man is going to do. Yeah, the Hebrew isn't the word mind. It's ruach, which is like spirit or water. Ruach, which is the Hebrew word for you know spirit, but so it's like his feelings more probably. That's what my inner linear has. You know. Yeah, you know, I, I'll have to double check that. Um, from from what I read, I, I think it's translated mind sometimes. It's, it was a hard word to understand, and I think it in in one situation is translated. Uh, I don't know if it's translated anger, but it has the idea of anger. But but yeah, thanks yeah, for that. Yeah, I'll... anger would be feeling. It. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the feeling is more of a feeling thing than a thought. It's, it's, yeah, it's their thought, it's but it's instinct. And it's in the mind. Reaction. The mind is really our emotions and, and things too. You know, I mean, it's 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 going it to be involved with that. Which is also spirit. Yeah. Spirit. Yeah, I'm not Ruach. sure about that one, but. Uh, so I want to be a wise man and, and, and listen, and I'll, I'm going to ch check on that, okay? <laughs> yeah. Think before you talk, because words have consequences. Right. Okay, let's move on. Um, Ecclesiastes 7.4. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. That word mirth um, is actually translated in other passages as joy or gladness. So I struggled with this one. The house of the wise, or, or the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. I'm thinking, why is the wise man in the house of mourning and the fool is in the house of, of joy or gladness, of mirth? That didn't make a lot of sense to me. Yeah. That, that is definitely on the right track. Uh, I came off with uh, the wise are more empathetic. Okay, than, good. Than the fool wants to be joyful for others' <clears throat> misfortunes. Good. Let me give you an example that I think might help you on this. Um, um, a, a relative of mine uh, became a believer a little bit later in life, maybe in her 20s or so, 25 to 30. And um, she came to know the Lord, and before that, she was a real social person, real party person, not into drugs and alcohol, really, but always going to festivals, always going to sporting events, always going to a new restaurant that opened. She just, just loved doing that kind of stuff. Then she came to know to the Lord, and um, I spent a lot of time with her sharing and about the Word of God. I had known the Lord for many years before that. And one time she talked to me, and she says, you know, I have this peace now that I know the Lord. Um, but she says, you know what, I think I was happier as an unbeliever. <laughs> and and I, I said to her, she, she said, she says, you know, now that I'm a believer, 
I think about the, the children starving in Africa. I think about the, the Asians that have never heard the gospel. I think about the homeless in Chicago. She said, when, before I was a believer, I was out having fun, and it was all about me making myself happy. Ignorant to everybody else. Yeah. yeah, but she says, now that I'm a believer, she says, I, I think I'm almost feel more sad. And I said, you know, the Bible says all of creation groans waiting for the Lord. Uh, we live in a fallen world. And so the wise man is in the house of mourning. Um, maybe there's a brother going through a hard time. And you say, I'm going to go, I'm going to go talk to him and minister him. The fool says, forget that. I'm going to the party. All right. Maybe someone's uh, mother died or a relative died. And you say, I I'm going to the uh, to the wake, I'm going to the funeral, I want to be there to encourage those people. You're going to the house of mourning. What's the fool doing? Forget that. That's, that's depressing. I'm going to have fun. So I think that's the reason why the, the wise man is the house in the house of mourning. And I put, for that, I put, uh, the wise man takes life seriously. Yeah. We take life seriously. I was thinking of um, reality is another word. Uh-huh. And the other one is being in the moment, you know, experiencing that moment that you're experiencing, not running away from it. Right, right. Ignorance Pastor? <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, I think you can go to an extreme on this one because also one of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. Yeah. And the joy of the Lord is our strength. So, um, I, I don't know. Uh, for example, we were being very joyful at worshiping God out there. Yeah. Now that's see, it's a different kind of joy yeah. than the world's joy, but I think the Lord wants us to be filled with peace and joy yeah. at, at the same time. Not that we're not serious or not concerned about other things, but uh, you know, Paul said, "Rejoice in the Lord always." Yeah, yeah. So I think you can go too far. You're right. I appreciate right. that. You know, and I, and I did wanted to mention that. I'm glad you mentioned it. Is that. As Christians, we need to have joy, and we need to have fun, and we would have activities sometimes at our church, and they're fun, and we laugh, and, and, and they're great times, and we do have fun. Um, but we also realize the seriousness yeah. of life. But yeah, thank you for that, Pastor. That's an excellent point. Yeah, quickly, just a couple more. Yeah, I'll keep it quick. Um, to me, it's being somber, kind of like what you said, and I think the heart of the wise realized his end realizes that, you know what, um, I'm going to live my life not just for the moment and just have as much fun as I can, but realizing that, hey, one day it's going to end, right, and therefore I'm going to base my life on living for not just now, but in the future. Yeah, yeah. Someone else here? Yeah. Um, I can't think of what uh, verse, but it, in the Bible it says about the um, morning and night, but joy comes in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, joy, definitely, like Pastor said, um, we should have joy. And there's a Christian that's, that's not having joy. Th there's some issues there because we, sh we should have joy. But we're also in the house of mourning. Actually, I went down to, I actually brought a souvenir back from, from Mexico. Um, my wife, my wife is Mexican, and um, we went... <laughs> We went down to uh, Mexico, yeah. We went down uh, to Mexico uh, a few months ago, and they said, did you have a good time? And I said, yeah, in a way we did, but one of the reasons I went, because I love her father. Um, I lived with her family. They were a host family when I was a, a missionary there. That's actually how we met. Um, but uh, uh, her father might not be around too long. you know. So I went down to, to see her father. Um, her mother's not in real good health either. Her brother's going through a divorce. So they said, do you have a good time in Mexico? Yeah, praise God. I got to go there and see them. But we went to the house of mourning, okay? There was a lot of issues going on there. That's why we went. We didn't go to have a, a fun time. But yeah, we should have joy as Christians. If we don't, talk to pastor here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we just got a we just got a couple minutes. I'm gonna I'm not gonna take any more comments or questions. I'm gonna finish this. If you have some yeah. comments or questions, um, you could say afterwards. So um, I put the the wise man takes life seriously. Uh, the fool 
I put life's a party. Life's a party. Uh, for us as Christians, we know that the party hasn't started yet, right? When we, when we get to heaven, then that's when the party is yeah, going to be. Right. For the fool, then that's when the party is going to be over, okay? Yeah. Even before then, sometimes, if you end up in prison or whatever, yeah. consequences of yeah. sin. So just real quick, let me do the last two. Um, a wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart is at his left. So I just put the wise man, um, his heart seeks the right things, and for the fool, um, left just kind of both of them being examples is seeking the right, and uh, the fool is, is seeking the wrong. Um, last one, um, the words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool shall swallow him up. So for the wise man, I put his words are kind, okay? The words of a wise man are gracious. Kind of relates a little bit to what we talked about before. Uh, is your, as you're sharing wisdom, um, you want to be kind and gracious. You don't want to come across as like, hey, I know it all. I've got all these wisdom stored up. That's what the fool would be doing. Uh, so the wise man, his words are gracious. Um, and the fool, uh, the lips of a fool shall swallow him up. I put for that one, the fool digs his own grave by what he says. The fool digs his own grave by what he says. And it reminds me, if you remember in the book of Numbers uh, 1632, it talks about Korath um, and some others that disputed Moses. And it said the ground opened up and swallowed them up. And that's what I think about the fool. Um, the lips of a fool shall swallow him up. All right, well, I just want to close here um, with, um, actually, I don't think I have it. I had a Bible verse I was going to close with. Oh, here we go. This is going to be just kind of like a benediction, um, and this will be like our closing prayer. I'm just going to read this. So let's just uh, listen here. This is from 1 Timothy 1.17. Now unto the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man. Great comments. Yeah, they're out there by my table.